Well, hello. Once again, I'm back with my friend Dewey, and we're going to touch base. We're going to talk about his Red Wigglers, his Full Circle Green Education Center, and um, we shall see where this video takes us. So enjoy it. Hey, what's up, my YouTube pals? Uh, here with AJ again today to talk a little bit about Full Circle Green and the Red Wigglers that he hooked me up on. Um, how do you want to go about this, AJ? What are we talking here? Before we get started, I want to learn more about full, your Full Circle Green Education Center and what have you experienced with the coronavirus and why do you think that uh, the center will educate people? That is an awesome question. Uh, number one... I don't think a lot of people realize that in this country, less than 1% of the population feeds the rest of the country. And we're learning right now with this whole Corona BS, I saved it there, but the whole crack about this coronavirus, they're slaughtering hogs and whatnot and putting them in landfills and everything else because they got no place to go with them with the big packing plants that are putting it on your grocery store shelf, which I think is just totally sad in my mind because the pigs are going in the hole so one thing that full circle green will educate people on and most people is that we can't be sustainable if we depend on one percent of the population to feed the rest of the population it's not a good idea it's good for some but it's not good for us it's just plain and simple for instance when the store runs out of meat on the grocery shelf there, there's still going to be plenty of pigs running around, but you're not going to be able to go tackle that pig down and start chawing on a shoulder, you know. You're going to have to down that pig. You're going to have to gut that pig. You're going to have to process that pig. That's the only way you're going to be able to eat it. So it's very good that people educate themselves to be a little more sustainable with your own food source and your own food line. I mean, the coronavirus, in my opinion, my opinion only, it's a freaking joke. It is... It's very, uh, it's not that, I don't want to sound like a dishearted or a heartless bastard here, but the bottom line is, is the coronavirus is not that deadly. It's about, let's call it 4% death rate of what people get it and who dies from it. So, you know what? We shut down the whole country and disrupt our whole lifestyle, which is going to come back to haunt us. I guarantee it. The Monopoly game is going to come back and haunt us. But to me, it's ludicrous that we shut everything down. If you're scared about the coronavirus, stay home. Duh. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. But we shouldn't be shutting down everything and, and massacring our livestock because we have got no place for it to be processed and it can't get to the store because now we got hunger coming in. And, oh, it's okay, though. The government will take care of you. They'll give you a subsidy check and they'll give you freaking stimulus checks and all this crap, which is ludicrous in my mind. We need to be more sustainable people. We have to take care of ourselves and be responsible for yourself instead of everybody else babysitting your ass. You're an adult. Grow up. It's that simple. You know what I'm saying? Spread yeah. that word. I want people to take care of themselves because as, as a whole, if we all take care of ourselves, we are more efficient as a species. Plain and simple. There's no arguing that fact. Okay, question about so, the, you're talking about the, like, the pigs and things like that. How do you feel about, like, limited supply on meat in grocery stores and stuff like that? You know what I mean? I guess uh, me personally? Yeah. I could care less because I just slaughtered pigs and I got a freezer full of food. So I know how to get my own food. Mm -hmm. You know, people are there again. Look at the toilet paper deal. Oh, my God. How stupid can we be, people? Really? Mm -hmm. Look at the toilet paper deal. Yes, they have to here again. We're not responsible enough to babysit ourselves so somebody else has to. Now, if I don't think that people should be hoarding food and hoarding toilet paper and all this and that, but as a human nature, you're going to do what you think it takes to survive. Well, I'm sorry. If you don't get the food, you ain't going to need the toilet paper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's... Here again, it boils down to self-sustainability of being able to produce your own. I helped out... Three or four people that have never slaughtered a hog before. They've never butchered a pig, never broke it down or nothing. And for their first time, they got their feet wet just because of the corona deal. Instead of the pigs going into a gravel pit or into the landfill, farmers are, I believe it's Christensen Farms, is asking for a $50 donation to a food bank. And that's $50 per pig. 
Well, getting a pig, 300 pound pig for 50 bucks, mm, that's pretty cheap. Yeah, it is. But if you can't process it, what good does that pig do? Yeah, that's true too. You know, and okay. I found out too, yeah, I ain't got a cooler system or this or that. We took advantage of Mother Nature. I think Mother Nature gave us a break when she had them freezing nights here last weekend. Yeah. Because that's when we downed our pigs and we hung them up in the shed and mm -hmm. let Mother Nature cool them down. The next day we process them, put them in the freezer and put them in the fridge. Way that we go. You know, it was pretty simple. Yeah. I just finished smoking bacon and and ham hocks yesterday, which I hooked AJ up with some bacon and some ham hocks. Yeah, thank you, I like Dewey, to for that. spread the love, you know. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm going <laughs> to Take care of each other, you know. That's right. Stuff like that. AJ's helping me educate people, so I'm going to help him out too, you know. Don't expect this BS of expecting stuff for nothing is crazy. Mm -hmm. And expecting that your feelings aren't going to get hurt is crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, come on, people. We got to. We're suffering from a severe case of cranial rectal inversion, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you heard I'm it from Dewey. <laughs> I'm sorry. We yeah. are. I mean, wake up. We're supposed to be an intelligent species. And look what we're, I mean, look at the chaos we're going through right now with this whole corona deal. It's like, really, people? You guys can't figure it out that, you know what, Mother Nature's going to run her course. Yeah. I mean, let her run her course. Let mm. her buck. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if we lose... And this is going to sound totally disheartening, and I, I don't give a rat's, mm -hmm. you know what, but I do. It's the fact of the matter of I want the whole herd strong, not just a few of them, yeah. and the weak pulling the strong down. Mother Nature can run her course. If the coronavirus kills 4% of everybody that infects, big deal. We lose 4% of the people on this planet. whoop de doo It's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. Not that big a deal. I'm, I'm sick of the whole mess of the fret it's like really wake up it's like i always said it's a win-win situation for me as far as i'm concerned if i get the coronavirus i'm not afraid of it i don't care if i get it if i get it it's a win-win situation people either i'm going to kick its ass and i'm going to be stronger for the next one or it's going to kick my ass and i leave room for somebody else mm -hmm. it's a win-win situation yeah. ladies and gentlemen it's that simple I hear you. <laughs> you know yeah you know, i don't that's know good. anybody that's gotten out of this game alive yet yeah, exactly. I don't believe in vampires either, but mm -hmm. I don't mean to ramble on here, but yeah. it's kind of just shit that pisses me off because mm -hmm. people are, they're stupid sometimes. So let's get back to the Red Wigglers, what we all came here for. <laughs> but <laughs> unless there's any other questions you have, AJ, but let's get back to the Red Wigglers and what we did here. No, so, but I just want to touch base because we never really discussed your uh, opinion on the coronavirus. So thank you for that, Dewey. You're welcome. So um, now let's get back to the Red Wigglers. Okay, so what happened here was AJ hooked me up. I had Red Wigglers before. Two times I tried running this fiasco, and both times I lost my herd. So last, uh, the third month, the 20, 22nd, is when AJ came over and we did that first video, and we set up the worm bin here. And uh, you need to be better at notes than I am. But I did take kind of notes mm -hmm. of what was going on just each yeah. day when I went in and looked at it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I did notice a few things. One, we discussed uh, onion peels, whether it was good to feed them onion peels. Now, I did have in my notes that they didn't seem to mind the onion peels and whatnot. So we fed them good. We put them in there, put them over here. And it was, I never did experience any crawl outs. There was never any crawl outs that I noticed. Uh, they definitely motored their way around the bend here and got in after everything. And I did notice one of the reasons why I think I lost my herders last time is because of a moisture problem. I did notice that I've had to moisten this down. Like this here, I can feel this and I can tell that this is still moist, but it's way drier than it should be. So I did find out that moistening this down every so often helps. Because I noticed when these here were a lot heavier with moisture, they hold the moisture better than the cardboard does. And I was noticing that the worms were laying underneath these when I lifted these up. So it's like, you know what? I got a moisture problem. Okay. You know, so I just started adding more moisture to it, water them down. So we're going to feed this guy again today. Yeah, sprouts too, but, so that's a good sign to it. Yep. So. There's all kinds of stuff growing in there, but as you can see, these, these critters got pretty nice and they seem to be happy. Mm-hmm. Happy creatures, and I have noticed some little ones in here too. Uh, he just disappeared, didn't he? So when you first got them, they weren't that big. 
I don't think they were that thick. No, they weren't like that, that big, and they weren't that thick either. So I don't know. AJ was talking about how their environment, they like a variety. You can't eat just one thing. I mean, if you eat just carrots, you're going to grow red hair, and, and your skin will probably turn orange. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you just eat one thing, it's not healthy for you. Where these guys here are in a totally different environment than what AJ's environment is, because don't you use more food and cardboard? Yeah. To where here I've been adding the chicken litter in there. Yep, yeah, manure, and chicken manure. And chicken manure, yeah. and of course you can see that I got some tree seeds from outside that are growing, so things are growing in here. And actually I ended up taking my, I got a cabbage plant that I planted up in the Hugo culture bed because one of the cabbage cores I threw in here started growing. So I put it up in the Hugo culture bed. It's the only god dang plant I got growing up there. Mm -hmm. So they... Here again, too, I think they'd digest this a lot better if it was cut up, but you can see they're already hanging out on it. They are chowing on it. It looks like he's got a hole in there and whatnot, so this would probably be a lot better if it was ground up, cut up, but you know what? I'm keeping it simple. Yeah. So if yeah. you ground it up, they just eat it, consume it quicker, but... Correct. If you have, like, a little bit of, um, like, those size, that's good, though. You can go a few more days without feeding them right. because of that. But, yeah, they are definitely... That's a younger one there. I haven't seen, I mean, them are, they're pretty small there. So I have seen some small ones in here. I don't know if they're hatching yet. We've mm -hmm. only been in this what now? But yeah, heck, we got sprouts. About two months in. About two months into it. So, but yeah, I can tell that this is dry. But there's, they're all over the bin. I mean, everywhere I go, there's worms. You know, sure, pull up a handful. <laughs> it ain't got no freaking worms in it. Yeah, because they all fell through my fingers. Yeah, but yeah. pretty much everywhere I go, there's worms hiding out in there. So I can see here already that my grates are opening up. The The paper that we threw over the mm -hmm. grates is opening up, so I'm starting to get holes dropping in here. So I'm going to add more material here. But we're going to go ahead and feed these guys. I've only thrown kitchen scraps in here once since we set this up, mm -hmm. so... I have not fed these things for two months, practically. And we touched base. We did a little talking, and you said something about the onion pills. Some people say you shouldn't feed them onions. Yep. What did you have? What have you experienced with onion pills? I have seen um, I've seen worms curled up right inside of them and eaten. So I okay. don't think. I mean, I've literally taken onion peels out of here, and there's worms embedded in them. But these are more the skins. They're not mm -hmm. the. But I didn't load it up. Yeah, yeah, granted, you load it up with a bunch of onions. Mm -hmm. It's going to be nasty. But like this guy here, you can tell they've been eating on that. It's yeah. practically all eaten up. And that's the butt of the onion right mm -hmm. there, you know, or the yeah. tip of the onion. So I don't, it's same thing as in moderation. It, there is nothing, nothing is going to kill you in moderation. Now, granted, if it's really toxic, like, uh, say, um, Cyanide or strychnine or something like that. Yeah. You better do it in very, very minimal amounts. Cause yeah, <laughs> you got that right. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, it's the same way with, like, tobacco. I mean, mm -hmm. granted, tobacco's not good for you. It's not healthy. I'm not saying go out and start doing tobacco because that's the strongest shit that I've ever... I still can't give it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've given up a lot of good shit in my yeah. day, but tobacco is some nasty shit. I uh -huh. mean, but it's all over the place. And I do not believe... That smoking a cigarette once a day or twice a day is any more harmful than the crap that we're sucking out of the tailpipes that are driving down the road yeah. every day. You know, I mean, yeah. it's still in the air. You're Look right. at the pollution deal when this whole coronavirus deal did and they had to shut down New York. Yeah. Look at the pollution that them people are sucking in their lungs every day. Okay. Same yeah. way out in California and, you know, any of your big cities, you're... Yeah. You're sucking on a big ass nasty cigar all day long. You don't even know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yes, sir. I mean, it's, think about it. You know, anything in moderation, I don't think is that bad for you. I mean, sugar is a good thing. Sugar is a very good thing, and in moderation, I don't think sugar is all that bad for you either. But the way we consume sugar, it's bad for us. With these, I'd spread it out. You know, what I mean, like. With, uh, okay, so I've got the uh, coffee grounds here. This is good for their grit. So I'm going to spread that over the whole works because that ain't going to ferment, right, and get hot? No. Right? No, you're good. And I am going to add more uh, chicken litter to this. Okay, so I threw the coffee grounds in, and AJ brought my worms some grubs, so I'm thinking we're going to feed them all on one side. We got uh, some toilet tissue in here. We got some eggshells in here. 
banana peels, yeah. some well, paper. And my eggshells, I have um, nuked them so they could be crumbled, but we're still, we're good and stuff. I usually bake them for about two to three minutes. What, but... these damn wigglers eat plastic? No, no sometimes what? people put things in there. <laughs> I'm not gonna say names, but it wasn't me. <laughs> here again, here again. <laughs> That's one of the problems I'm gonna have with full circle green. I would love to have enough red wigglers and whatnot that I can have a actual dump truck come here on a daily basis and unload kitchen scraps and table scraps. But people, I don't think, are gonna be smart enough to be able to separate shit and yeah. keep it. You know, that's going to be the problem. It's going to boil down to the human factor again. You got to take as that far as stupid sticker. But, but yeah. yeah. You know, it's going to boil down to there's going to be plastic bags and all this and that. And that's one of the fears I have with this whole Full Circle Green Education Center. Because the black soldier fly and the red wigglers can compost buku table scraps and not put, uh, not turn it into methane gas mm -hmm. that we have coming off of our landfills. And all this and that. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me why we are throwing this product into the landfill. You know, it just, yeah. it, I don't know. We're supposed to be intelligent, but, <laughs> you know, I have yet to see. Holy cow. So we got some more, uh, looks like we got some lettuce greens in here and some celery greens. Yeah, this is from my father-in-law. And this is going to help to it moisture because the... Okay. The leaf, leafy, leafy vegetables carry moisture, so that's going to help too. Okay, so, so do I spread this around the whole works? We can put it all, on, this, we can put all, put it all on one side. Where don't migrate that? over and eat it. We'll just cover it up. Okay. Here we got some more plastic. I don't know. Yeah, things going to keep that plastic out. You got it. <laughs> plastic is not good. In general, plastic is not good overall. Exactly. Yes. Oh, you guys got oh, your Oh, yeah, one. they're good to eat. That's a buffet right there. That is a buffet right there for... So. Festivus for the rest of us, baby. I want to thank my in-laws for this. This is from them. Thank so. you. Appreciate it. Feeds well, my babies. Can always re <laughs> reuse what we don't eat. So. Yep. so we pretty much just fed on that side, but I'm going to go ahead and throw a layer of dirt on this side too. because Okay. Get... So this here is just more or less composted uh, wood chips and stuff that I used in my chicken coop. And it pretty much just... It's all pretty much broke down to black dirt now. It's beautiful. I love this stuff. This is too. It's going to help control any smell and for bugs. It'll keep the bugs out because they won't be able to get to that flies and stuff. So it's always good to always cover your food scraps up. Okay, so we got a pretty good layer on there. Oh, they're going to be good to go. They should be good. So I'll keep an eye on that. I'm going to go ahead and throw this on this side. And I'm not worried about throwing this in there. I probably... Oh, my goodness. We got an intruder. Oh, that one came from out, That one came from out on the bottom. That's an earthworm. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to learn to live with us. <laughs> We're going to have a good time here. <laughs> so, essentially, then I'll just throw that cardboard back over the top. This is degrading pretty good, actually. And then I'll wetten that down. Mm-hmm. Just so it's good and moist. So what size is this bin? This is... Kind of caught you off guard on your dimensions and stuff. Um, it's plenty big for what it is. It's about 20 inches tall. Yeah. But I made it because that was the material I had. To work with it is made out of cedar god dang it a guy don't have a freaking roughly two foot by three foot okay just somewhere in there and i just made more or less dimensioned it because of the length of my boards and i wanted to utilize my boards so mm -hmm. my boards were as long as what these and these were yeah so i could utilize the boards so a viewer asked about the i'm gonna get my hand got a little i'm not worried about my hands being dirty but just kind of sticky. But if you were, had a comment about it could have been your worms could have died from oil in your cedar. But I said uh, I don't think it was because you said there's no oil in it. I did not treat the I didn't treat the inside. The outside I did with yeah. Johnson's paste wax. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The outside I did is all I rubbed on that. Because I like things natural too. I was kind of thinking it was the cedar was because it was so aromatic. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to use the cedar because it's gonna rot a lot. 
It's gonna, not going to rot as easy as a lot of your other woods. Yeah. You can get your soil too a little bit if you want. It's not going to kill them. He'll like that, you know, a little moisture. Like I said, he has lettuce in there, so he's, he's got the water level as well, too, to help. Yeah, because I usually, like here, I'll, I'll drizzle good. this until I start hearing. Because this whole bottom of this thing, if you watch the original video where we originally set this up, this whole bottom is set up on a grate system here. There's rods that go through, mm -hmm. and there's fingers on each one of them rods. So that whole bottom is, I don't know, you can probably see it if you look up underneath there. I don't know what he got in there. Yeah, if we I can't can see tell anything. Not on my knees or stuff. Look but good. but yeah. does it look good, viewers? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see the newspapers and whatnot and the bars there, the round bars. Let me hold it under while I move it so you can see it moving. So you can see there, and I'm not going to rock it very much because I don't want to, but you'll be able to see it move. Oh, yeah, I see a little few. So they, they all up. move together. So essentially what happens, this is considered a through composter. So as this composts down, and once I get my level up to about here where we'll be feeding all the time, mm -hmm. this is practically a new bin yet. But by the time this gets all the way down there, when I add stuff up here, by the time it gets all the way down there, we're going to have straight worm castings coming out the bottom. So what's your goal? Like, usually a pound of worms is, you know, you start out with or two pounds, give or take. Okay. But how many pounds of worms are you looking forward to in the future? What do you want to have, like? About three ton. Three tons of worms, okay. Three ton. I'd like to have about three ton of worms. That means that I can digest at least one ton of food scraps Shoot. a day. Okay. Which, that's the idea yeah. behind Full Circle Green. I'm talking big scale. Yeah. That's the reason why I want to build the greenhouse, because of the black soldier fly. Because it bums me out. My black soldier fly has been hiding out here in the blacksmith shop since friggin' last October, mm -hmm. November, whenever. And they're still alive, but... They ain't doing me no good because yeah. they can't, they're dormant now because it's too cold. But okay. if I had a greenhouse out there, I would have them flying around all winter long, hopefully, and still producing flies and larvae for chicken feed or uh, human feed. Yeah. I know people freak out, and do yeah. it, but whatever. It's yeah. a very good source of protein. <laughs> but I have another question for you, okay? Okay. Just numbers, you know, I'm catching off guard. If you don't want to answer it, you're more than welcome not to, but. On an average, how much do you think it would start just to, how much income would you need just to get it started? You know what I mean? Like, what do you think? You got to have a, a plan just to figure out the basic entry level. Of well, the greenhouse, the greenhouse alone, for just the greenhouse itself, I had that figured in that I easily blow a hole in $10,000 without a problem. Okay. 10, without a problem, I'll blow $10,000 up. Okay. Easy. And that's just the first stage, you would think? That would only be the first stage for okay. the whole project, because the whole project is, being as it's full circle, full circle goes from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And anything, if it all works out, I mean, we're talking a pond. Okay, I got a pond that I can feed the fish, the larvae that the soldier fly are eating and mm -hmm. producing the larvae. So I feed the fish to the larvae. What kind of fish? Koi or something? Or I certain... would I would go with catfish. Okay. That way there, I don't have to heat it in the wintertime. Okay, thank you. So okay. essentially that way there, if I want and I can go down and there's no food on the grocery shelf, guess what? You can eat the catfish. I can go down here and go yeah. fishing and I got supper, baby. Exactly. You know? Okay. And so then the water from the pond also goes through the hydroponics in oh. the greenhouse, which the fish poop to keep the water clean feeds the plants that grow the food that i That's eat good, and the uh, food that the chickens and the rabbits and everything else eat and of course they what their excrement comes out goes back into the pr production of fertilizing the plants and all mm -hmm. this and that so it's a the whole idea behind it is, is being able to start to finish okay so it would be i mean we're talking a fence that goes around all except for i got to leave my wife a little bit of yard area here because she actually the idea of putting a fence around the whole property and just having an entrance gate okay <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but if okay. I had my way, that's what we'd be. I'd have a fence around my whole property and just let everything buck. You know what uh -huh. I mean? Pigs and chickens and okay. rabbits and geese and ducks and you name it. I'd have yeah. all the critters. I mean, when you come into my place, it'd be like coming into a safari. It would that's be right. kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Ictionary the lions and tigers and bears. Oh, but... my. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else we have to... Is there anything else that we have to do here? Or we're good to go again. So I just I think we're good to go. We fed them. There's moisture. Okay. There's more than enough food in here. And we're two months in and three months, if everything's going well, which it looks like it is. 
they're going to keep multiplying. It should double so, in size. Yep, right? the population should double. And you said you also noticed that, I don't know if I asked previously, but there, you said the color has changed. You said they did seem to get a lot redder, and I don't know if that's because of the more of the can't, can't remember chicken litter or what. Okay. That could be. I noticed that they did get, they got a brighter red when you brought mm -hmm. them to me. They seemed like they were a really deep blood red. Okay. And then when I threw them in here, I mm -hmm. got kind of concerned because it was like, oh, well, man, they're starting to turn pink. So I'm thinking, yeah. oh, shit, I'm not doing something right. Yeah. But obviously they, well, like you said, I mean, a lot of these that were good sized ones, I mean, they're nice sized worms and healthy as all get out. Yeah. I mean, they seem to be anyway. But I'm glad to see that everything's working out for you, you know? Right. Yeah. See, they're not... Well, he's pretty dark red there, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I just... They're they're all over the place, but... Yep. Little critters. So, at least... It, I haven't noticed the numbers falling. So, I'm going to go ahead and write down... Today's date... That we fed them and whatnot, and... Here too, these notes are a personal preference, but it is kind of nice when I go back and look on here and I see what happened. And all I did is I kept up for it pretty good for the first month because mm -hmm. it looks like my last entry was fourth month the twenty second, and my first entry is the third month the twenty. So I did pretty good for yeah. the first month. Hey, give me some credit. Yeah, here. good job, but Dewey. <laughs> Dewey for president. <laughs> yes, Dewey for president. Yes. I guarantee you I win the lottery. That is exactly what I'm going to do with my winnings. I'm running for president, baby. Boy. We're going to sink some shit up, I guarantee you. <laughs> okay, so oh, we got AJ's buckets here. Yeah. Um, but yes, people, the whole thing is, is if we can make this work, I mean, it's not that big a deal for anybody to have worms. Granted, you're not going to be able to take care of all your food scraps. But how is it working for you, AJ? Do you have to find food scraps someplace, or do you produce enough food scraps for your, your worms? I have more than enough food scraps. My in-laws give me food scraps, and my boys can eat, so we got to get extra food. Okay. And so I'm never sh short on any food scraps. Right. So Just, it so. boils down to, but everybody that has a herd of worms, every every bit of whatever we digest as a group of people with red wigglers mm -hmm. and just taking care of our red wigglers, that's that much less food that's going in the landfill. Mm -hmm. 30, what the heck is it? 34% of our food, I think it's like 34% of our food ends up in the landfill. Uh, and we're starving, yeah. really? Give me a break. Yeah. We're just too damn picky about what we eat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> here agree. again, if you get more self-efficient, self-sustainability, I think is the key. Because mm -hmm. like this whole corona deal, I mean... Like I said, I'm, I'm not too worried about Corona. I don't think Corona's that big of a deal. But wait till Mother Nature brings out the big boy that's got like a 30 or 40 percent death rate. Okay. Now we got some issues. Yeah. Now we've got issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, but sooner or later it'll happen. It's just a matter of time. We're overpopulated. Mother Nature's going to weed us out one way or the other. It's just the way it is. It's a natural part of life. Exactly. You know, unfortunate, but. The way it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, exactly, do I so agree. Did you have any other questions or No, I think you hit everything on on point. I mean if 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 you're watching this video and you always have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments box because I get back with Dewey and I'll let him know what you say. So Sure. And I do check these videos out once in a while too, so I check out the videos, but I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but hey, you know what, people, we're gonna have to start getting a little tougher because there, there's going to be a stronger virus than Corona coming around, and if we're not prepared for it, we're going to be in trouble. It's That's just right. the way it is, yeah. you know. But thank you guys for your time. I appreciate your time and watching the video. Please spread it around. Let's uh, let's get more self-sustainable people so we can we can survive things like this without a big issue. Because the grocery shelves are they're saying the grocery shelves are going to get empty. Well. I'm not too worried about it. My tan my pantry's full. I know mm -hmm. how to take care of myself, and I know how to harvest food. So exactly. if you don't know how to harvest food or whatnot, and you have an opportunity to get on with somebody, get on with yeah. it and learn. I mean, I would love to. If I had a cooler, I'd have a frigging butchering school going on right now to where mm -hmm. you could you bring your hog, and I'll help you down it and part it out and mm -hmm. cool it. And, and But unfortunately, I don't have a cooler, and I still have to play the Monopoly game and make mm -hmm. money to 
pay the bills. Yeah. So. <laughs> I hear you, but doing. Last weekend was a long weekend, I'll tell you what. But okay. we got her done. We downed uh, five pigs, five pigs, and roasted two of them the next day and butchered up the rest of them. The other three of them, we cut them all up, carved them up, and I made hams and bacon and ham hocks. Uh, I got ground sausage. I got ground pork or yeah. pork for sausages and whatnot that I'm going to be making this afternoon. So. If you guys are in on some of that, we can also do a video on that too. I, if you guys want AJ to pull a video like that, I'd love to someday we just take out a, a batch of uh, pork out of the freezer, I'll let it on thaw, and we can go through the sausage making process and see how easy it is. And once you make it yourself, you can dabble with it and make it the way you like it, not the way the store makes it. You can That's make right. your own sausages. I hear so you. you enjoy the vittles that I gave you, AJ, and I, I think will. you'll enjoy them. I we'll will. Make I got to send him with some uh, bacon and some ham hocks and some summer sausage, venison summer sausage. But that's the fun of it all. Mm -hmm. I love I love spreading the love, man. Awesome. And I do too. <laughs> I do too, do it because that's what friends are for. Yeah. But uh, I just want to say thanks again for your time, man. It means hey. a lot for you to actually take time out to educate and enjoy the friendship we have. And yep. hopefully this biz, uh, this center will start education to grow center. Yeah, this yeah, education it's, center. it's not a business i know it's all but you always hear about businesses so education <laughs> center you know it's not a business it's a center to educate us educate us all so yep. dewey i want to say thank you for your time you're welcome thank you yeah viewers you have a great day later on peeps bye, bye.